If you want to be my friend, you would better go and get up. And this was very Christian. Maybe we can keep in touch. Like we did in the old days. And the old guy so long ago. Taking this ring off in 42 <laughs> years. I'm a lumberjack who you attends remember, mass. Do you remember the guy, the old guys at mass in church who would just sing? The, you'd have men who would never sing. Yeah. Like, I ain't fucking singing. I, I, uh, can I ask you uh, uh, a very honest, revealing question? In excelsis Deo, lo, oh, oh, And then they would be like a kid that they were just nice oh, to, but you knew it bothered oh, the old guy that the kid couldn't really, like, was bringing them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're only as good as your worst participant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait. Remember uh, church? Question for you. Oh, we're coming back to that. Okay. I found myself in my most recent Where? hour oh. doing a quick throwaway joke that I did in my first hour, and I feel bad about it, and right. I also don't care. Why? Do because you... it works so perfect. Wait, so just to be clear. It's not a bit. You said, I one... feel bad about it, because I'm like, and I, I don't care. Because and I those are, con that's oil and water right there. Not really. You think about you people are like this bad. all the time. I feel bad, but I keep doing this. That's like so human nature. I, will, I don't converse with those people. You are one. Oh, right. No, I'm not. I mean, well, one, yes, and no. <laughs> there it is. If I could touch your nose, I would have. Honestly, if you could touch my nose from there, that would be the last episode we ever do. If I just all of a sudden. You're a demon, and you're the old but lady I don't call in it the out. sky. And, you're the old lady in the sky in Ghostbusters 2. Who yeah, 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 yeah. Oscar and yeah. Some of the, still to this day. Gets you. Lo I lose a little bit of sleep each night because of the existence of that that ghost like <laughs> and like then they go off to the mm -mm. museum do you want another line what you don't have to do this what i always something where i'm trying to get the crowd to do some dumb shit yeah i go you don't have to do this you can be like those old people in church who never sang but they're they're going to hell and you are too they i are. said that in my first fucking hour and i've been saying why not say it forever i'm if it then it yeah then, and it's then fine. don't even do a joke it, that even relates to it in any way won't. whatsoever <laughs> anyway people singing in church anyway <laughs> yeah what about it did you sang, right? I was in the choir at my school. The chorus. Choir? Mm -hmm. Is it the same? You were, choir, you were in choir. You go to Alyssa, who's you were You were in chorus. You were chorist. part of the choir. Yes. I never sang in choir, but... <laughs> God damn, so not, 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 not good enough. Not good enough, dude. Not good enough. She not wants to sing all by herself. Not a pro singer like us. She probably told those son of bitches, hey, after, after we get out of the gog, I'm going to be in the parking lot. Yeah, all people want to fucking the hear gog. me sing. After we get out of the gog... <laughs> G O G U E. Have to get the gog. What? That's it. I but choir and chorus are the same. They are. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I guess. Well, then I was in two things. Dumbest maybe... question I've ever asked. Synagogues don't have choirs. No. Do they so that's want why, them? Right. You would have had to go to church to be in a. If you were or raised... are you talking about school? Well, if you I... were raised we're Catholic, Catholic you would have been. In he the, was in church choir. You would have been in the church choir if you went to Catholic. A hundred. She would. And any sergeant. sergeant. You would have any yeah. church, yeah. Any church, you would have been, been out there. You know what she would have fucking done? You already know the bells. Well, you would have done the bells. Oh my god, I would have loved with the gloves. With the gloves. I, loved it too. I know. I've always wanted how the opportunity, and it was never there for me. I, I, I didn't grow up like most people. I didn't have that chance. The odds would say yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you this: Do you think we 100%. have one hundred percent three pen pals? Who will write in a letter saying, yes, I was in the Bells. 100%. Not, it's not a letter we're going to read, but just we know. Because also, we haven't said this in a while. We read every letter. So even if you feel like, damn it, I really, ex I really well, opened yeah, up. You, feel good about opening up because we did read it. It just doesn't mean it might not make it And don't the show. write us a letter and fake it like you played the Bells. Nah, I don't want that shit either. Yeah. If you have a picture of you doing the Bells. Ooh. The pen pals pod do, at gmail.com. Do you think Boom. we have anybody doing the bells in their life now while listening to this episode? Yeah, you think Emily Cox is out there bell, bell bopping? Emily, you bell bopping? Emily's not bell bopping. I don't think so either. Somebody is, though. Somebody's yes. bell bopping. Yes. I feel like somebody like 
Katie Dugan or like Sarah Miles were bell bopping. Lissa, what? So then, what were you? How? When the singing just that was just you went I took was, a class. You like what happened? I well, so I did music like outside. I was a musician more. Like I played you, piano. You and have I, no idea how badly I wanted you to say. There was like this drag show and I would sing at this bar. And then one night, you know, there can be a hundred people in a room and all you need is one person. And this guy, I guess he's like a big deal. He like <laughs> takes me out and we end up in this like grocery store parking lot. His name like, is Bradley. Here nor so there. <laughs> and he's like, why don't you sing something for me? And then we hit the road. <laughs> We're married. Okay. He loved the shape of my nose. Um, <laughs> I, I just did. hear you I, sing again. I did. Sing in a bar growing up. Yeah, though, was how I got my. Start oh singing. wait, so that's sort of true. You're in a bar singing. Yeah, so there was this there was this Are restaurant bar in wait, Seattle. Was it karaoke or was it? No, Lissa it was with a band. is a part of our establishment who does this. So my piano teacher, uh, Bradley Cooper, was a blues pianist, okay. and she would she worked with this this restaurant bar in Seattle called the Scarlet Tree. Still going? Uh, no. Fuck. And they had, In our hearts. Yes. they had um, a stage, and she would do like a. Her kids, her students would oh. come up and play and sing with a live yes. blues band. I love that. Oh my god, it was super this cool. This is what happened to me. Remember when I was in. Right before Tulsa, Oklahoma City, I went into that bar and there was like a jazz night happening. Yeah, yeah. And it was so, they were students. Yeah, and so it's I amazing. was I was nine, I think, like eight and nine when I first started doing it. And then the liquor board, the Seattle liquor board uh, or Washington State liquor board, got involved because they were like, "This isn't." But I there just was gotta like say, a, they're right. There was a clear <laughs> cutoff. Not in Wisconsin. There was like a clear barrier between the bar and the stage sure. oh, okay, and the restaurant. Yeah. So it really. But you're there, up there. If I'm, you yeah, could I'm argue that it was Absolutely fine. Absolutely, you're up there. You L is for the way. We doing a little bit of that. Yeah. What What were you doing? Yeah, come on, give us I one of your hits. Do you know the song "Busted"? It, gonna, I think they it won't was, be able to put this on YouTube. I already ruined it. It by was singing. the theme song to Weeds. Oh, what? well, the bills are all due and the baby needs shoes. And that I'm was busted. like a go to every d- thing. I sing that one a lot. Oh, With okay. this guy, Larson Hockenstad, he and I would do that one. Together. Larson Hockenstad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. I like that. Wow. Yeah. Yep. You were in choir. I yep. know we have to go. We've done so much. Who cares? I know we're already at zero. Because we're chatting. We're having fun. But you were in choir. How I was long? I was in choir. Uh, I don't know. Remember when we, when we could do it, but definitely. Pro- I definitely middle school and maybe late. Elementary, like fourth or fifth, could have been earlier. I, was I mean, choir. chorus was a class. Did you, you guys had wear to the take. white gowns? Yeah, us too. Up in the back of the church, but we were not in the back. We were. But this was school. Cool. This is church. This is church specific. Church. You guys didn't do this any was through music our in 20, school. Twenty eighteen, we did music in school. This was I did chorus in school too. You had to take music oh my class. God, one of the and biggest could also be in the chorus. One of the biggest church. regrets of my life, all time, still haunts me to this day. And someday, if you remind me, I'll tell you the story. So I'll never remember that. You have like three out there that you're still supposed to. I can't call remember back. them. <laughs> my favorite one. I would have done it by now. My favorite one to sing in church. <laughs> and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. And then it ends like this. Yes, they'll know we are Christians you have by a, our love. You have a vibrato that's very it's like very, Mayor that's of Munchkinville and Wizard of Oz. Do it again. But don't think about what I just said. I can't. Do it exactly okay. the way you just did it. And they'll know we are Christians by <laughs> our love, by our love. We yes. represent the Lollipop King. Well, it's this. this is what you're really... <laughs> As coroner, I do declare <laughs> I've thoroughly <laughs> examined her. <laughs> and she is just not merely dead. She's really quite completely dead. I don't know about the end. <laughs> 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 yeah. Wait, well, now we definitely can't air this episode. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got to be close on Wizard of Oz. Hey, guys, if the- you're going to sing, cover Judy Garland. <laughs> Go to the top show. Oh, my God. I'm, Should we? So something else I have to tell you. Yes. That's Let's, Let's go to the letters! I do it. We reach each other's nose. Everybody finds out we're doing this. So people are like, wait, what? If I go like this in the wide and then she cuts to your single, do it. we can cheat it that it looks like I reached for your nose. Well, now we just gave moment. it away. No, but do it and I'll do it. 
Okay. But we'll leave it in for the audio, and we take this out for the video. Okay. Okay? Oh, wait. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Hey. <laughs> so stupid. It'll work. Okay. But anyway, I love is you didn't react as though that just happened. I just stared at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that show we talked about doing mail. is going to be great. Snail mail. People often accuse us of never reading the snail mail. They don't. We, we read them all. We, we like to stir controversy. That people love that kind of stuff. Uh, we get into it here at the. If you're a new listener, we get into it. Mm-hmm. We rip it up. And we tear it down. Mm-hmm. This is coming to us. Are these Scotch and soda pants? These this are new stationary. pants. Uh, dude, Scotch and soda. These are new pants. New pants. God, this is how you know you've really been in each other's lives for a while. Yeah. Okay. This is stationary. There's names on it. Thank you. I'm glad you finally got on board. <laughs> I was always on board. I was testing you. <laughs> I was the footprints carrying you. <laughs> Thank you. Dear Rory and Daniel. Mm, do you feel differently now, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Birch, motherfucker. Here we go. This is a letter. Okay. Rory is first since I'm giving this on his birthday. Sounds let, to me let, less than twenty four hours after Daniel's birthday. Yeah, it also sounds to me like they needed a big qualifier as to why they did that. Wow, well, they I, didn't say because that's how it is. They came to. They me. said it's his. It's almost like they're saying to me, Daniel, it's his fucking birthday. Just to be clear, my birthday was in Burlington, Vermont. I and remember. I haven't read this yet, but this guy came to Burlington to give me this. You don't think he lives there? I am moving from Burlington. Oh, <laughs> I am moving from Burlington, Vermont, to Brooklyn in three months. As someone who has never lived... So wait, so how long has he been there? Like a month and a half? Two Brooklyn months. Three months. Two months. August, yeah. Like two and a half months, two and a half months tops. All right, listener. So, you get, now you've cut your teeth a little bit. Yeah, yeah, this we'll is have, great. We'll have, some, we'll have some ideas. Yeah, good. And now you're through the holidays, which probably meant you were going back home and stuff anyway. That's right, that's right. Possibly. That's right, that's or right. spending time with found family, friends. As someone who's never lived in a big city, Burlington and Nashville being the biggest, I am concerned... That is not a big city at all. I am... Those are also most like sister cities, too. I am concerned for the sake of my wallet and sleep schedule. FOMO is a big issue for me. Any advice for the move? Must see places in New York. Food recommendations. Thanks for the laughs. Jack, P.S. Rory, thank you for the advice you gave me walking to your Thursday show. I'm getting on stage this week. Ooh. Ooh, dancer. I hope he's a dancer. Just to, just to bring everyone up to speed, including you, I uh, was headed to my Thursday show at the Burlington, Vermont, the Vermont Comedy Club. Great comedy club in Burlington, Vermont. Also, Burlington, super great city. I don't really want to talk about their winters because it could be brutal, but summertime in Burlington, Vermont is dope AF. It's a great three weeks. Really, really fun time there. Um, it's Thursday night, uh, past this guy, Jack. you remember this? Uh, I do remember this because uh, we were talking about stand-up. And he was talking about getting his 10 minutes together and blah, blah, blah. And I just said, ten, and I, and I mean this for everybody. And I will say this for everybody listening who wants a, I haven't started yet. And I am curious about stand up just to get it all the way. Whatever you think you are writing as jokes or things you're working on and you want them to be really good before you get up there, it's because you're coming from a place of, yeah, but when I get up there, I want to be good. You have not done one second of being at the job and already you want to be good at the job. For example, Mm -hmm. if starting today, I wanted to be a chef, I would not assume that I'm going to know how to do it or anything about it until I step in to start learning to actually do it. So sure, write things down. But when you start getting on stage, just go up and see what it's like to take a microphone out of a mic stand and put in your brain that your only expectation is to go up, get to the microphone, get the microphone out, move the mic stand to the side. <laughs> if you so desire to perform don't that way, sometimes foot, we don't want to take the don't mic get out. Tangled up. Don't get tangled up. Literally just go up and like introduce yourself and maybe say something about yourself. And if the entire audience is like, what in the fuck is this? This isn't even stand up. It doesn't matter what they think. Right. You are not there 
to be able to successfully do a job you have never done before. But I guarantee you the second time you go up, you won't necessarily think about getting the mic out. You won't think about how nerve wracking it is to be standing there talking in front of strangers because those are two things you've already gotten out of the way. So the second time, try one of those jokes that you wrote because you're going to have to learn what it's like for people to not actually like the joke you wrote or to like the joke that you wrote. It's all a slow, lifelong process. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and th there's no reason to go, yeah, but once I get the 10 minutes that I really like, then I'll go on stage. That is absurd. Ask any comic how they learned to write jokes. It's because they've performed jokes that worked and didn't work. Right. That's how you learn the to do it. The other annoying thing is... That's what I mean to say. Five different comics are going to give you five different answers. Yes. So there's so, no yeah. one way of even there people there, telling yeah. you how you do it. This is just specifically what I had told Jack. I oh, just no, said... What you're saying yeah, is yeah. great. I'm saying I about said how, how to write. Oh, 100%. But also, there are comics that would, go, that would say, I'm wrong. And I go, that's what's beautiful about art. Wonderful. There really is no that's right or wrong. That's what makes it art. But Jack uh, said that, and I gave him that advice. And so it's awesome that he said... He finally said, I'm just going to get on stage this... Uh, Week, which this was five months ago, is that we just concluded? Yeah. <laughs> Why am I asking? It was my birthday. Um, our birthday, in a way. But only one of us got a letter. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jack! Um, I don't know that I have advice for the move. Maybe we both do not specific locations, because you didn't live in New York City, but living and moving into Chicago is not so different mm -mm. in terms of vibe. Different in oh, terms man, of I obvious so locations, but... I was so scared. Yeah. I remember riding the, the L, the, yeah. the subway in Chicago, all the time. Elevated train. Being terrified. All the time. Yeah. Like. Of what? Theft? Getting beaten up? Everything. People I remember, wanted to hurt and kill I remember you. one time, it was me and a couple other uh, people I knew from college. I had known them for maybe three days. And this guy got on the train and he goes, okay, everybody, if I can have everybody's attention. I just need a little bit of help with my life. I don't have a knife. I don't have a baseball bat. I'm not going to stab you. I'm not going to beat you to death with a baseball bat if you don't give me any money. And I'm like, we are getting killed. We are all, we're all dead. Yeah. We're already dead. Yeah. This is lost. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if, if anyone hasn't seen Lost yet, I apologize. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was scared all the time. I yeah. felt so intimidated by that city. Yeah, and yeah. It's Chicago. Right. I mean, you know, I, I know that the, we've all seen the headlines now, but but you also grew up the most in part, a small town, mm -hmm. so it is wildly intimidating. It, yeah. it is a massive increase in population, and that's oh my intimidating. God. That's wildly it's a intimidating. massive increase in everything. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, well, I, I remember. Cultures. I remember Diane Keaton, dropping me Keaton. off. <laughs> yeah, dropping me off, and uh, she must have just been like. Good luck. The fuck, um, what the fuck are we doing? She probably, she probably questioned her motherhood. She was like, I, this is not, I'm making a mistake. We're standing on the corner of Wabash. I owe him safety and I'm not <laughs> providing Standing on the corner of Wabash and Congress oh, in the loop. Love those streets. And uh, Christopher Nolan's you, favorite shooting. You location. have been there. You know, you, It's right by Buckingham Mountain. And, um, Palace? And, uh, <laughs> love you. And I just Why would a thinking, joke is so shitty? You have to acknowledge it. <laughs> no, that it's just boom, boom, so boom. So dumb. Sometimes with us. Buckingham Palace. It's, it's, it's like jazz. <laughs> not good jazz. No. But there's definitely not a plan. And sometimes Slow we overlap our jazz. instruments. <laughs> Slow acid jazz, folks. And we haven't learned the chords yet. Oh, my God. A jazz concert you guys where they're all on mushrooms? You seem to be playing the same song. Uh, it's jazz. <laughs> <laughs> um. But what, what you went DC then New York, so you yeah. half stepped it a little. Oh, New, DC was the biggest city I had ever lived in, and which blew made my New mind. York. Oh, it's also you scared. didn't jump to the top step. This no. kid's kind of jumping to and the top. And also, I step. went with somebody. Like my sister lived in DC, so I had that, and so I had her friends, her group. So I had like people. Um, not that you did or didn't have that, but then in New York City, I moved with Jordan. So, and then. Uh, we were there for a year with friends who also had lived yeah. there. So, yeah. What was the stuff at the end about FOMO? Rory's my favorite comic um, that I saw on his birthday. He just says FOMO is a big issue for me. So I think it was, I, I think that's why he's saying, give me some recommendations. I want to make sure, like, I think I think it's more like I want to make sure I do it while I'm here. Well, I want to do it all up. You probably want to move to like Bushwick, right? Well, I'm actually 
curious where he where he moved. Queens, yeah. it's probably like Queens or Bushwick at this point. Must see places in New York. Let's just do basic stuff. Must see places in New York. I'll tell you what. You do have to see Times Square during the day, and you have to see it at night. Did you ever do After New Year's that, Eve? You maybe don't have to ever go there. This ever is again. time appropriate. Did Not you at all. ever do New Year's Eve? No. At Times Square? Yes. No, uh, no interest in that whatsoever. At Lisa, all, you never did it, correct? Bit. Never did. Chad, would you ever do it? What is what the fuck is happening? Just to be clear, his microphone is not as accessible as Lissa's. <laughs> no. <laughs> and we're out. And that Worth is it. all we will get. He and it's not us telling him he doesn't get a microphone. He has told us we get one word an episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's his <laughs> system. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. So you're not recommending that. I'm not recommending go do that at all, but you do have to go through it and see it. Like it is like it, yes, it's a tourist trap, but it's at night, going through Times Square is like fucking crazy. You know, I used to go up to Caroline's, rest in peace, and I used to walk all the way up there, and I would intentionally walk through Times Square because it's like, You're yeah, here. this is a crazy location. Yeah. And the way that you see the lights from so far, far away. Yeah. yeah. I lived on the west side of Manhattan and worked on the east side, and so I walked oh, yeah. through Times through Square it. to get home. Yeah. And I would intentionally, especially during the holidays, I would walk by Rockefeller Center because yep. it is as like magical. beautiful and magical as the you. The tree, the skating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, New York City, in my very limited amount of, not to say limited amount of travel, I think I've traveled a lot, but all of the stories and movies and like fictionalized elements that people have when New York City is presented in a story, it's all it all actually checks out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like when you go past Rockefeller Center and you just go, oh, I feel like I'm in a, a movie that I've seen before that was filming this. And you go, yeah, because the thing they filmed was actually real life unstaged, real people skating, yeah. the tree, people walking by. It's all just exactly what it was. Yeah. Like I, like you watch Ghostbusters. Like, ah, it feels like I'm in Ghostbusters. Like, yeah, because most of that was real people. Just ha it was happening. It was yeah. going on. Yeah. I um, I'm gonna preemptively call myself out because the the thought I have feels like so Anthony Bourdain. Okay, but I would say I was a chef, and we would do coke on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first chance you get, walk around that city in the rain. Uh, duck into like a little restaurant, find places you've never gone, pick a bodega, and that oh, is that's yours. What I say, that's yeah. yours that you go to every fucking day. Ask those people about their life. Talk to them yeah. about how you're doing. If you're on your way home and you don't need anything, pop in to say, hey, yeah. make that your place. Get to know the cats in your neighborhood and some of the rats. I, like, can, I, can I piggyback? Can you, you, you interrupt? This is ours. Walk around and grab slices from so many different slice places, and very quickly you will learn the art of being able to distinguish from the exterior if a slice place is worth your time, whether you've been mm -hmm. in there or not. And mm -hmm. you will find the places that look cheesy, touristy, shitty mm -hmm. that maybe have the best slices. You will. Mm -hmm. It's weird how that works. But like the the you saying walk around, duck into a restaurant. New York City is the one of the greatest cities in the world, period, in my personal opinion. But it's definitely great for walking around and discovering a bar, discovering a restaurant, because in L.A., you have to have a there. plan because you're going to get in your car. So you right. have to have a plan. And so right. already there's so much spontaneity taken out of your trip. But mm -hmm. in New York City, you can walk out. You can walk Manhattan. You can go walk Brooklyn. You can go walk the boroughs and discover all of these these places. You don't have to. Uh, you don't need a car. You don't need uh, a taxi. You don't necessarily need to even ride the subway. No. To but in a very a very small radius. Mm -hmm. Discover so much fucking shit. Like, just the East Village alone. Yeah. And then you go, I've never been over the West Village, where there are fucking so many jazz clubs and cool restaurants and mm -hmm. wine bars. Like, pop into a place. And when I just, because it's somewhat seasonal, one of my favorite times when we lived in New York City, massive snowstorm, which, as you know, and I, maybe Chicago's like this, even though they're way more prepared for a snowstorm. Massive snowstorm, yeah. so the entire city is, like, dead quiet because there are no one's driving rarely, but it has happened yeah in Chicago, the yeah. city is just not what it usually is and you can hear people 
voices echoing off buildings. It was like Mars. It's like a fucking Tennessee Williams play. Yes. And so walking around was freezing and ducking into a pub where there's a legit fireplace or even like the fake fireplace, but mm-hmm. everyone is in there, mm-hmm. coat rack at the door, mm-hmm. and everyone having drinks and almost welcoming you in out of the cold, which for some reason just feels like the 1800s. Mm-hmm. And, and going into a tavern. Some bars are close to that. Yeah, time. and going into a tavern and having a drink. I, I talk about this all the time. It felt so poetic. It felt like I was living inside of a, a poem. And that was like something that, just you get out of New York City these little flashes of like living inside of a book. It almost feels like, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, the walking around. The great thing is walk everywhere. If you can time it out and you go, well, I need to get on the subway. If you can time it out to put on some headphones and walk, you will by default find yourself in a state of physical health that you are not even making an effort to try to achieve yeah. because you're just getting physically active. So much more than you could in Los Angeles mm-hmm. or many other cities. Chicago is similar to that. You could walk a lot in, in mm-hmm. Chicago if you decided. Chicago is obviously more spread out. but No, you can walk you could, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing I'll say, too, is relish <clears throat> the in the moment of your life that you're there. Yes. Because it is going to be met with some of the biggest struggles you've ever faced that someday you will look back with not just rose colored glasses literally fucking glasses made out of roses like yeah. like there's yeah. a woman like sitting in this room right now that that, that waxes on about walking up five fucking flights to her apartment that Dude, at the time yeah not Chad wax miss, on or wax off i love that apartment so much and it was and it five was, flights yeah, she had it, to walk up in new york city mm-hmm. yeah, yes there's no elevator the sclars the sclars had two friends and they would share a computer every week uh, they, one guy would have it and then they bought it together and then another guy would have it and they would have to trade on off and when you wanted oh, to do clear your writing your history when you, you know that, <laughs> I, think there's, I think there's things. some of that yeah. yeah when they wanted to write you that was your week to get your fucking writing done yeah. for comedy or whatever or scripts or whatever you were working on and at the time what a fucking annoying way to live your life and they look back now and be like god that was the fucking best it was the best yeah so you you right now if, if you've st- if you've stuck with doing stand up you are also in the greatest city in the world you can find a mic you can find three fucking mics every single night yeah. go up put your name in early be kind to people have a good attitude that will go way farther than just showing up and being an asshole who's talented yeah uh i trust me i know um and uh that's for the video and then um just just live in it like live in it and experience it yeah you know what I, like there's when you're dead fucking broke food has never tasted better in your fucking life yeah like a just i think we've talked about this before but i had times in my life where i had ten dollars a week yeah and god like i was doing dunkin donuts uh sausage egg and cheese biscuit breakfast biscuits <laughs> almost every day you are wild <laughs> i know this I'm, shit I'm, you, I, you can't even contain this is why you talk about your food all the time because the shit you ate from like yeah. seventeen yeah. to thirty five, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so still sort of. You had it. no regulatory. Yeah, it was just like you making that. Yeah. Well, up until twenty three, my body was in burned everything. Shape. I know, but you still did it. But the only the only thing I got out of it in a negative way, but my body did agree to continue to work like that. Until I was 28. So I got five bonus years that yeah. I didn't earn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gave me that. Well, you're also walking around the city. Walking around the city. And uh, it it truly... I wish I could get back to back to that, but every day that you... Look, Jack, the point is time's going to pass you by. Just who... Can I say one luck. last thing? Have fun, dude. I don't give a fuck. That I've said <laughs> before. It's mad, for anybody Jack. who moves into the city. Yeah. If you're walking anywhere and you feel unsafe about someone next to you or behind you or just where you are in general, start walking down the fucking street. Yeah. It's the most well-lit area and it is way, yeah. way much of a bigger hurdle for anybody to fuck with you. Also, they're not going to throw you against a wall or pull you down an alley, which I know New York doesn't have alleys, a little alcove yeah, or something least, like that. They, to the surprise of maybe some people, uh, maybe, I don't know, but I never felt safer in 
a city the way I did like New York City. And you want to I, know I felt agree. safer and you in New York City than my hometown. I agree. Yeah. And one of the reasons why people don't think about this, this is actually true in downtown LA too. There's fucking security and doorman at every fucking and building. There's, and there's you're people. Walking by and, and, there's people. and there's people. In yeah. New York, the, it literally is the city that never sleeps. We would yeah. get home from. But like, there is an hour well, around around 4 a.m. Well, when it's just say, you and some trash can people. Yeah, we would get home from a bar or a club at like 3.30 or 4 in the morning. And then 5 a.m. delivery trucks are coming in. So there right. really isn't. Yeah. Uh, there is hardly a quiet time there. I, I've never felt safer. Yeah. But Same. do you always, especially early in a city, all before you've started having cocktails or having fun or go to a second location, look up how to get home while your phone still has battery. Yeah. <laughs> like just, yeah. Oh, I, that was never, the, I mean, that was never part of my life there because I, this, uh, my time in New York city was pre smartphone for me personally. I was there. I was in map the quest 2010 papers. Map quest, or you just you just went. That's what I mean. You just like went. You did look it up yeah. before you left, but, but that York, was your that was your laptop. That New you York had to leave also in your makes apartment. it so easy to so not easy. have to. You know. want to know Great how system. easy? Great system. Right back, and we'll get out of here. Good night. Back to that bodega. How do I get to? Uh, yep. And then they'll tell you. Also, put your wallet in your front pocket was great advice someone gave to me. I That's still just do that good for your back. to this day. Yeah, me too. Um, but uh, well, now you're a satchel man. What do you want to say? I have just Liz? one thing. Yep. I think in New York, we can edit this. We'll edit this. You can edit this out. I'll edit it. She out. even <laughs> agrees to it, and then yeah. she's the one that does it. <laughs> um, I, I think it's really hard to live in New York. Uh, and not spend money. Sure. It's a really hard city to not spend money. Sure. It's also a really easy city to make friends. Mm -hmm. And yes. so I think that that's a cool balance. So it's a great trade-off with respect to FOMO. I don't know how much money you're going to save sure. in New York, but you, New York's I think tough. you're going to have a lot of, you can really easily meet really Go to the park. cool people. Go to the park. Get a, ser get a service job so you can drink, drink and cheap, eat for free. Drink cheap beer. Yeah. Okay. Um, Go PBRs at a lot of the bars. Um, drink at a certain time. Find the dive bars. That's where you're going to find the, like, shot in a beer, and that's just what you do. It's not healthy, but if you want to drink, that's what you do. Um, I was going to say, talking about the grid system in New York City, maybe a lot of people know this or they don't, but when the Dutch settled in Manhattan. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, fuck right there, dude. Captain, 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 my captain. Uh, when the Dutch settled in uh, New York City and New Amsterdam, the roads were going all over the place. Yep. They go all over the place up until Houston. Is that right? Maybe Sounds Delancey. Right. Um, I don't remember how far up they go, but it, they got that far. And then someone said, "You." It, I don't know who put this out there, but they said, if you don't do a grid system starting here, we're going to end up like Boston. Well, the, this island will be filled with people who are, have mental disorders because there is, this is not well, this is not good for the human brain. Yeah. That, like, back then, someone yeah. was like, th so that's why when you get to, like, Houston, so they settled down and went all the way up. So, ha like, Wall Street and all that shit, that's why you're like, oh, it kind of feels like I'm in Amsterdam. It's like, because you are. But as soon as you hit Houston, it's all a grid system, which some people think is boring, and that New York City would be this more interesting city had they just been chaos the whole way up. New York City might not be New York City. Right. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yes. You look at some European cities and be like, Paris is great. It's like, there is also some structure to Paris, but Paris does have the element mm -hmm. of, like, chaos and you as know well. How, and you know how Chicago got their grid? Uh, no. The fire. Oh, is that true? They were able to redo it all. Redo everything. Go, yeah. let's get it right this time. Yeah. 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 And then L.A., which had the opportunity <laughs> to build an incredible train system. And got bought out by the tire companies. Yeah. And New York City. Look it up. Okay. Anyways. Uh, Jack, good luck. Write us back. Let us know how New York is going so far so we can talk about it on the uh, Patreon. Mm -hmm. uh, but until then, we wish you well. Sincerely, your pen pals, Roy Scovel and Daniel Van Kirk. Hey, pen pals, I want to say something really quick. If you haven't signed up for the page and you missed out on all the Enneagrams, Fuck you. they're still there. <laughs> We're about to start doing, or we already did start doing, I don't know. We're probably in the middle when of is love what? languages. When is what? We're figuring out our love languages. So mine is yelling. <laughs> I think. What do you think yours is? Uh, just sign up for the Patreon and find out. I I have an answer, but I don't want to say. I want to say what I thought mine was, and whatever it is when we're done. But I promise, I, I'll write it down if you want to. Too. Sign up for the Patreon me. and find out. Okay. All right. Get on that. Hey. hey we are back. back.
back and you're listening to Pen Pals Podcast. And I'm going to say this. Light Rock 98.9. Right away. Joining us today in studio is a first time SAG Award nominee, Mr. Rory Scoville. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rory. Thank you. Like, like. Dreams come true. Let me start there. Um, dreams do come true. Roar. <laughs> if like before, let's say you get an Emmy nomination or win one or Oscar or win one or Grammy oh or win God, one. Oh my God, a Grammy. Um, and he will raise you up on eagle's wings. Bear you on the breath of dawn. I don't remember that part. Make you to shine like the soul. And hold you in, in the palm, palm of his hand. His, because God is a man. You got. We <laughs> say it all the time on this show. Never forget, God is Dude, a man. Dude, have you seen Sean Patton's new bit of No. <laughs> you guys think God's a man? Oh, in the special? You think he's a man, right? God's a man? <laughs> what kind of dick does God have? <laughs> Fuck. Now, do I drop that joke? He's I have got a, joke a big like that. old dick, right? You're God thinking God is just a big penis swinging behind his leg? Because he's got to have one, right? He's a guy. Yeah. Okay. Hey, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Before yeah, those yeah, other yeah. accolades come for you and for me. Yeah. You could have a window where somebody like it'll say like like where they're saying the list of who's in the thing and it's like SAG Award nominee Rory Scoville. I know they don't do that one as much, but oh, that's I, now a thing that could happen. I to make you. Jordan say that when she wants me, like she needs me for something like in the bedroom. Like SAG nominee Rory Scoville, come in here. My Elliot you, has to say dad. SAG nominated dad, come here. It feels good? Yeah. It, it better good. fucking feel good. Yeah, what do I care, dude? I know it's all the, it's all fuck? an arbitrary thing, but it all says you're in the right rooms. That's what it says. Yeah, what do I give a fuck, dude? What? I'm give a fuck. Burn it all down. I hate I'm an artist. Go, I hate when you go bad boy. <laughs> I'm a bad boy. I don't. You know what I'm having for dinner tonight? Sloppy Joe's? Again. You motherfuck. I have been having them every night since that episode. So you're back. You're back in your 28 days? I don't, I can't breathe a lot of the time. Didn't you tell me? I can't. Your resolution is to not do this? I know, but I just, I love Sloppy Joe's. And Jordan's cool with it? She likes, she likes a bad boy. (laughs) She's making me do it because it's so bad. Go see Babylon. See why if you Rory's haven't seen Babylon cast was nominated for a SAG. Go see it. Why it won a Golden Globe for musical score in theaters now. Go. Um, I have a show in L.A. called the Whatever Show. It uh it is um every Monday for the most part at Elysian Theater and also as of yesterday, I've announced my tour that starts in you April. You did. As of yesterday. As of yesterday, the when 17th, drops? Out of yesterday, gotcha. the 17th, I announced uh, my tour. It's called The Last Tour, Roy Scovel. And there's uh, not like one of those tours where someone goes for 60 days and they do 58 shows. It's one of those tours where you don't know. I'll do like 25 shows in four doing. months. Other than Tom. Yeah. That's what everybody's doing. Yeah. So that's going to be my... D- and I'll probably do this tour for, I don't know, five or six years. Uh, <laughs> just keep doing it. So... Not um, that. And then Daniel, you're at uh, Lyric Hyperion yeah. every m- Irene Wednesday. Two and myself. Yep. Uh, the Lyric Comedy Hour starting tonight. Starting tonight. Yep. You are on the show. Mm-hmm. Ever Maynard's on the show. Chris Estrada's on the show. It's pretty great. Beth Stelling, right? Beth Stelling on the show. Insane Nicole lineup. Buyers on the show. That's an insane lineup. I agree. Yeah. Um, How'd you pull that off? Asked. All right. And I think uh, I think we'll I think it'll be a great line. You know, we're only ever going to do four to five comics. Yeah. So we want people to have a good, nice little chunk little set. Chunk. And um, with four, I think uh, I think we'll always have at least one mm-hmm. or two people on there. You're like, holy shit, mm-hmm. um, that that's a great headliner. Mm-hmm. And then others also, everybody else will probably be at headlining level and or at least like a great solid feature. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a great show. Mm-hmm. It's called the Lyric Comedy Art. I hope people come to it. And. Um, I mean, it takes us forever to do anything, but we talked about an idea for a show before we started this, and we can't promote. We can't even talk about it. Twenty twenty five, we'll probably get to it. God, that would be fun. That'd be fun if we could do it. If we could actually do it by twenty twenty five, that'd be an incredible pace for us. I mean, it's huge. Yeah, we would really step up our game. It's a big deal. I know. Anything else? Do we have anything else going on? No. Nope. We'll probably do some live episodes this year, right? Yeah. Twenty twenty five. Well, we have our fifth anniversary. Yeah, that might be a thing. Should we say we're a potential location? 
Yeah, you can totally say it. He's, you're going to make his day if you say this. Chicago's. Uh huh. Chicago's. Do you want to do it with him? Shakakakis. You'll make him cry if you say that. You know, there's a or chance. Or you can hold it. There's a chance. I mean, you guys can see my dates for this tour now, but. Wait, yeah. There is a chance it could time out a little bit past. That's fine. That we, I'm already there and we go ahead and do it. We make a big thing. With Michael? You come to a spot. You come to a little time on the tour. I'm doing it where the at the United Center. My show is at the United oh. Center. Like in an auxiliary room or the main? Uh, comp, uh, the locker room. Team locker The visiting team locker room. The crazy thing is, right? <laughs> but the hey. showers of the visiting hey. team locker It's not like... How great... We didn't a, sell that many tickets. How great of a show would that... I bet you could put a lot of people in a fucking NBA, NHL locker room. I bet... Uh, I bet you could easily put 60 people in a locker room. Yeah. Now, obviously, way below you what you're looking to sell, but you can. Would be kind of weird. And it fun. would be fun. Yeah. And just say we did it in a locker room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For no, and there's no reason. Dude. And it's, like, well, he must be from Chicago. No, it's, no. Lock- it's his favorite team. No, it's not. It's locker room talk. <laughs> That's lock- the tour. Locker room talk. <laughs> All of it tour. is wildly sexist. Ugh. Okay, so oh, we'll see. We like sexism. Fun stuff we do. I've never, this whole time, I've never understood it. You never paid attention to any of the oh, courses like you had misogyny. to take? Are we yeah. not in? All right. Yeah. Well. Um, okay, ready? I don't know. Let's read this, this is, letter. I'm so bad. Do we do it for the second letters? Can no. I just say? Can I just say something? Can I just say something? I genuinely forgot. I don't know either, and it's been almost five years. We just t- talked about our fifth anniversary, and then immediately right after that, we forgot how the show operates. Do we need to? We've already kind of went. We can't here we are. And here we are. Right back at face it. Face to face. A couple of silver spoons. Oh, I don't remember that at all. I know it. I'm just saying I don't remember. I don't think I ever watched Silver Spoons. What are you going to tell JB when we have him on? Yes. <laughs> now you're like Do back you know to what you I was going to say? What? Wait, who's JB? Jason Bateman. Is he in Silver Spoons? Are you... Fucking me! I've never I know, even seen I don't think it. I'm fucking you, but I never saw it. You, you definitely saw it. You saw it. I never have. I don't think I've ever seen an episode. Here we are. Can I tell you why I know the the I, words? Literally, you could go Daniel, pile of cash right there. All of it's there yours. Is. There's always outside seeing, the studio. Seeing any part of Silver Spoons other than Here We Are, which is the part you just heard. I don't. The part you sang before that. Can I, I tell you why remember. I know it? It was now that's what I call kids music one. Oh, I already told you the story. No. Well, how? I know it because uh, in 2007, I went on tour uh, on the road again in Canada for the Yuck Yucks comedy tour, Western comedy tour. Okay. Now I'm staying at the hotel with my buddy Casey Corbin and our friend John Doerr. His yes. show, the John Doerr television show, is guys. about to premiere in Canada. Casey and I, as a joke, we tell him, oh, it's a shame that our show came out first as a joke. And then we go, well, I have my camera. We're on tour. Let's film an episode of something. So we film an episode of me and him as roommates in a hotel. Vince Avril and uh, two other uh, comics, <laughs> a few other comics, like local guys. We film it as though we live in a hotel and that our apartments are the hotel rooms. It's called The Apartment. I cut it together and I use that song as our theme song yeah. of the show. Yeah. And then as soon as we made it, we're like, th- we we had it end. We had an mm-hmm. ending where I decided to move out. And then we go, let's shoot more of these. Over that whole tour, we shot eight episodes, fully improvising what the story should be, coming up with you it. You still have all this? Casey Corbin, I think, has all of it on his Facebook page. He might have, it was all on YouTube, but, but we used real music. And this was before they cracked down on that. So now it's on Facebook. Well, you can still do it now. You just can't make any money. I, th- I think so. I think he maybe re-uploaded it, but... Play truly, at a whatever truly show it you is eight episodes blew? that I am so wildly proud of because it didn't come from us sitting writing out ideas. We ca- at one point, like the fourth episode, I want to be a rapper called Lyrical Miracle, and I think I'm going to move to LA and have a rap career. It truly, I think it's incredible. Screen one or two of these at the whatever show. It's not. I don't know if people would like it. I am very joke. proud of it. Um, so that's how. You, so you learned at the age of 27, you learned the theme song to Silver Spoons. Yes. Okay. We never even got back to the thing I was going to say. We'll do it a different day. Okay. Dear Daniel and Rory, because that's correct. First off, written. wrong, wrong, and weirdly aggressive in the... Well, I read it aggressive. You want me to read it friendly? Dear Daniel and Rory, because that's correct. That still is aggressive. Why is that correct? That's just how they feel. I'm not saying it. 
I'm agreeing. I'm one of those people that thinks people's feelings are wrong, unless they align with mine. All right. I am a Patroni. I don't think that's how I'd spell it. With a crazy story that my friends don't seem to appreciate. I can't get over it. I'm almost to the point of telling strangers, but instead will write a letter to my best pen pals and see what you think. Well, best and okay pen pal, I guess. Me. <laughs> As background, I'm not in any way a believer in spooky stuff, fate, karma, etc. This is just a coincidence to me, but perhaps others will get meaning from it, however small. A little before, <laughs> a little before. Th- I just love that it went from "I can't get over it!" exclamation point to "This is just a coincidence to me." Mm-hmm. But perhaps others right. will get meaning from it. <laughs> a little before Thanksgiving, my husband was at a red light leaving the grocery store, and this car kept inching close and closer, trying to get around him. Finally, she hit his side mirror. Info was exchanged, the usual. He had her info lying. I. Lying on our desk. Lying on our desk. Was going to make the appointment for repair when I noticed her address was close. Makes sense since she was at our grocery store. I decided to look up her house on Google Earth to see which one it was since since I drive past there sometimes. I saw her house, recognized it, no big deal. I then turned the image so I could look across the street and there... On Google, on a Google Earth image from August of this year, was my husband driving past there. I am attaching this pic. It's absolutely him in his, what is it? Cute orange cute, car. Cute orange car and work vest. When I tell you that I was frozen in disbelief, not that it means anything to her, yep. but she can't get over it. It's just a coincidence, but to maybe to someone else, they would be in disbelief. What are the odds <laughs> that anyone I know has ever been... Was seen, ever it, seen on Google Was ever Earth. seen, sorry. Was ever seen. I can read. Look, sometimes. we have an issue with our printer right now, right. guys. And Lissa tried to help me, and I told her don't worry about it. Oh, but should, she should I, is should extremely I just flash, vindicated Should I just right flash now. this so people can actually understand it? No. So they don't think that you're sitting Let there em. unable to read. Hey, if they don't trust me, they don't trust me. Is it because you can't read? Yeah. Oh, my God. This is a combination. This is a combination of problems. <laughs> you already told Todd Glass that you can't read. But that doesn't mean that, so that doesn't we, mean you can read. Right, but you know what will happen to this show if both of us can't read? If neither one of us can read and that gets out, we're through. Sergeant. Your secret's safe with me. <laughs> Don't a cat, I can't. It? Don't add. That's gonna be a whole thing. <laughs> It's absolutely him and his work vest. When I tell you I was frozen in disbelief, what are the odds that anyone I know was ever seen on Google Earth, let alone my husband, let alone driving past the house of the person who would hit him three months later? I'm still gobsmacked. No, you're not. You (laughs) said that you're not already. This is my story. Thanks for being you, Jennifer Braun. P.S. I sing the song at the end with signed your pen pal, no S, because I think it's one person writing. That's a great reason, but because you like Daniel Moore, we actually cannot accept that answer. I would also <laughs> say we're the theme song is from our perspective. I always thought. Oh, so then and an S is just because we are writing. This is our letter back, yeah. our audio letter. Yeah, which you've told me listening to something is the same as reading. You know, Let's could, move on. I could text Patrick and put this to bed, but is I that have, fun? I got is that fun? I know how the magic's done. I got to chime in about something. The original conversation, what? Unless this is a separate conversation, was. Like they did in the old days, or like we did in the old days. That's no, what, we've also done. Pen okay, house. we're doing separate. So but we no, there's two this things. song, while being great and nominated Perfect. and having won, yeah, 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 best theme song for a podcast at the SAG Awards. It's not without issues. Um, <laughs> none of us know the words. <laughs> it's two things, Les. It's two okay, things. two things. But, so we haven't dropped the we they dispute, and we never will. You, I forgot about it. Let okay. Let's start the show over <laughs> again. All right. Um, oh, could you imagine how horrible that would be? Let me ask you this: how, What level? Uh, because it's meaningless, truly. But what level of elation would you feel if you looked up on Google Earth and saw yourself? Because you've seen the Google car. You know yeah, what I mean. I have. 
And because you've seen the Google car. Technically. You are somewhere on Yeah, you're right. Google. If you could remember where you saw it, you could probably go back and look. But what do you think the turnarounds on that? Days, weeks, months. And I'm blown From the moment I, you see it to the moment that that's the new image. Because they've gone back. Can I tell you? I'm blown away by the fact that it's even a thing at all. So I don't know. It blows my mind. Second question. Okay. They're independent, right? Who? Like Apple's doing their own. And this feels like a Chad question. Chad, Google's you're more tech savvy doing than their we own. Are. You know what's so I don't know if Apple's Chad even doing Chad being not tech savvy is still someone I would go to for tech advice because that's how I non-tech savvy I am. I just did it to him like two days ago. Did he answer it? Did, was oh, he smart? Visuals, screenshots, Oh, you knew everything. it. You did know no, it. No, 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 no. I asked him about a different tech thing. Look at him. He doesn't know if he's allowed to use another word this episode. <laughs> I can see well, him debating it. Well, if you it. do... That counts towards your words towards future episodes. Yeah, that's rollover. <laughs> now, <laughs> like he, he says, no, like it's sacred to have that word in the next episode. What? No, because I want to be able to answer another one word response next week. So I don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste two in one episode. <laughs> Is Google the only people doing Street View? I don't Is that know, all Daniel. I don't know. Is Tesla doing? Tesla uses, I think, their own satellites. Google. I think they use Google or Apple. Then they why don't the use map their own. on the screen in the Tesla be a Google map. Why would it what? Why wouldn't it be a Google map? I think it is. No, it's not. It's all gray. Even if you do No, you can make it the real thing. Google Earth? You can do it that way. But the like non Google Earth I think it is. I think you I think it is. It is not. I think it is. I think it's their own. I don't think it's their own. I don't think they have their own. You gotta think like, they have that's, satellites. That's crazy to have your own. But look at Google Earth is driving around cars. They don't matter. They but don't I think they're only satellites. driving around cars because they want Street View. Because after I ask this question, I should admit I don't think it. I think Google's the only people doing Street View. Let's uh, look this up. She's got unlimited words. All right, let's take. Tesla it. uses Google Maps as the base for Tesla Maps. But they don't present it as the same. Uh, it doesn't look the same. We don't. We, that's obvious. We know that. Right. But so the information like your screen does not look like this on your phone when you go to Google Maps. No, I don't think so. No, trust me. <laughs> Correct. So like then they use navigation and data about routes is from a source called Mapbox. So they use a couple different sources. But Street View, Google, I think is the only people doing Street View. But I have seen other cars that weren't Google driving around with cameras all the way around. Uh, those are cops. They're not good at Or Teslas. I have cameras all over my car. That's true as well. Pretty soon, Tesla could probably use their own cars. You're 100% right. You'd have to give them Sounds permission like it would be or they would just illegal. take it without. Can I, can I say something right now? Yeah. I just did the update on my Tesla. Did I already sell this story? It looks different, right? Hold on. Because I've gotten into... It's more than that. Okay. I just did the update. Because I've gotten into other ones and I'm okay. like... Okay. <laughs> just did the update? I won't. I just did the update and... I could click, do I want to accept the beta version of the full self-driving? Clicked it, and last night, our Tesla drove us from our house all the way to the restaurant that we were going to in Silver Lake, and only one time did I actually need to correct it. It's the beta version, sure. because it could not interpret taking this one exit to go under mm -hmm. like the highway. And I, I went as long as I could. I held out. And then I was like, it's definitely not getting over, so I got to do it. But I got to say, it took a left turn onto a major street mm -hmm. and then quickly merged into the right lane to take the next right, and it did it flawlessly. And mm -hmm. I, Elliot's in the back seat, and while we're driving, I go, this just confirmed, Elliot, there is no world where you will be driving a car because I think in five years it might be crazy that there's even a steering wheel in a car. I go, this is the beta version. Yeah, remember this Demolition is so Man? so close to perfect. They would just get in. They're facing each other, talking. That's, while that I'm is exactly what we are headed towards. A hundred, no doubt, one hundred percent. In ten years, it will be it will be vintage that you have a steering wheel in your car. There is a chance that even there's a chance that even cars on the road. Nah, that, what I'm about to say is not correct, but it did sound right when I first said Free it. Space. I was like, it might not be allowed to have your own cell. You might, you not might not be allowed to drive. That'll, yeah, that's more, that's longer. Coming. But, but it it is insane to get in the car because you are nervous as fuck, and also you have to sign a thing yeah. that says you understand that this is beta, so right. this can slam into a wall. Right. Like you have to. So I, I'm like this, 
my foot just over the brake, yeah. and my hands are at, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. at any second. Because as soon as you tap the brake, it's back to you. So all you got to do is tap the brake real quick. I am, like, at the ready. It was it was doing it the whole time. It didn't used to be able to do it in neighborhoods because it couldn't interpret right. stop signs or lights. But now, the update, I c- it distinguishes 40 cars around me and exactly, I can watch on the screen, exactly where they are and what type of car it is. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. It's so wild. I'm, I'm curious how quickly like GM and Ford and Toyota, because they have way more money. Oh, they're going to... Once they decide, and they're they're going to poach people from Tesla. Like They have. They're, yeah, they already have. They've decided. But I saying, think they just can't match the battery. They cannot. I don't know that they've been able to figure out the battery, maybe. Mm. Also, Elon Musk is pl- probably... Mining. Oh, do you want to see these photos? Yeah. So these are the photos of, uh, from are, the letter. Are life-changing, but no one cares about But them. she does not... Our writer Jennifer. is not even Jennifer. slightly swayed by them because to her, it's just coincidence, but maybe to other people, this thing that she's gobsmacked by might be um, interesting because she doesn't believe... Hold on. I got to say this. I am, in, I am not in any way a believer in spooky stuff, fate, karma... For the record, and I, I mean, don't. I think I'm. I, I think I'm a firm believer in all of those things. I, <laughs> I'll tap into that in a second. I don't like ever being uh, like shooting down anybody who sends us into a letter. Yeah, but I don't think any of those things apply to this. It is. Sp- I, I think so because oh, there. Oh, you could say spooky. You could say spooky. It. Fate, karma. Well, I think fate, karma, because it's like. In front of the house of the person but you... But that's not karma. Like, you didn't do anything wrong. I don't There's know no comeuppance. I don't know if it's karma, but I don't know if it's like... And it wasn't fate, fate that you drove in front of their house and then Look, got in an accident. At, no doubt, whether you think it or not, there's no doubt that it is a wild coincidence. It's just what it is. It's a wild coincidence. Yes. How, it's, it's an opening of magnolia type. How insane it is of a coincidence is like bizarre. It is bizarre that it's her husband in front of that house... And it just happened to be, like, but it, but also proximity. But think about the Google Earth car. A little bit of proximity. The Google Earth car. He's directly in front of the house, at the timing of that. Yeah. Do you have to show these lists? Or are you dropping them in? What do you want to do? My favorite is that, and I love his safety vest. Also, I love these houses. That's a decent driveway. That's a good That's amount of property. You can see the address. Oh, we probably shouldn't show that, right? Why? No. Why? I don't know. I mean, I we're gonna drop. We're gonna drop in the. I mean, I guess you could crop it, but like, it's that, just a place. But that's got to be insane. We're not saying that's not their house. And to be honest, I don't know which house is hers. I mean, here's and, the thing. and if any of our pen pals, if you've gotten th- even this, I was gonna say. I was gonna say our podcast. I was gonna say this episode. If you've even gotten this far into this episode, you're not gonna go bother this person. Yeah, let's, I think we play it safe, no matter what. Okay. I mean, I don't want this woman's house 22. becoming the new Goonies house. You know what I mean? Twenty two, twenty two. By the way, got sold. I think. Um, uh, can I? Hearthstock, can I throw some out there? Stock Road. Can, there, can I throw some out there? Yeah. Seeing, seeing that, and now I, I think I'm. I want to retract. I think I'm coming into wait my I understanding. Have no idea of, which way you're gonna go. I think I understand so, why Jennifer is saying people will go fucking crazy. What are you pointing at? Mow your fucking lawn. Thank you. I think I understand people going crazy, going, this has to mean something. I think Jennifer's merely saying, I don't think it means anything. I do Fine. think it is just a coincidence, but I am blown away by it. It is wild. Yeah. It is wild. It did seem like, Jennifer, just to apologize and clear it up, I, I did that. think Look that you us. were contradicting yourself <laughs> and that you were more blown away. Right. And, I th- and I thought you were just playing it cool, right. trying to be a cool cat. Right. But now I do get it. You are saying, I don't think it's anything special, but a coincidence, but I am floored by the fact that it happened. And I got to say, the more that I say it, the more floored I am also by how this woman hits him. They exchange information. She merely goes to see where that house is, and it just so happens that her husband is driving in front of that exact address. At a very specific moment in time, Mm -hmm. I conclude, I think they're meant to have a throuple with this woman. Yay or nay? Yay, obviously. (laughs) Huge throuple fan. I'm always in favor. Jacoby, write me back and let me know if you think this is throuple potential. Oh, I have a big question for Jacoby. Let's see if he listens. David? 
He he told me in uh, he Houston stopped. he he goes I don't like I don't care for the show anymore. So that's why I hope his hotel, whatever it's called, Lucy, uh, Lucine, Lu- Lucille Ball, didn't he Lucerne. Say, he didn't tell me that. Didn't he say Vicky? I felt. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. It feels like to make jokes like that about like loyal family members from the beginning. It feels is. bad. To, <laughs> yeah, we're curious. For the people who aren't to Friday yet, Daniel's actually using a coaster from the hotel, which is nice of a gift that he was able to get from Jacoby and a hat and a bunch of other merch and honestly, probably steak and stock in the hotel. I have a big Um, question for him. Go ahead. Uh, What is it? I don't want to say it. Okay. He he, he needs to prove he listens. He does listen. Um, And if anything, I guess what I think about it like this, Vicky. If I for some Vicky, what's up, Vicky? If they're gonna show her that, Vicky, make this the clip, Vicky. Why don't you listen to our show? Why do you have to get it through your son-in-law? And Keith, I, I'm not going to lie, Keith. Do you think Keith listens? No. Do you think the kids listen? <laughs> no. Do you think... I think Keith loves us. The... the 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 um, Brian? Yeah. He, does he listen? Not anymore. Remember when Brian... Did Brian want to kill me? No. He didn't want to kill me. I think you. Brian wanted to kill me. He, kind of, he wanted to... He wanted to fight. I would say he wanted to test strength. He wanted to test drive a fight. He wanted to test strength. Yeah. He was kind of in a test strength yeah, yeah. mode for uh, only a couple minutes. Yeah. Then he, Brian, you're the reason I started learning jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, if Keith hears that, she will be mortified. Why? Is it the South and that her friend, one of her friends was being a little aggro. So will be mortified. Oh, did she miss out that? I don't know. Keith, your friend Brian wanted to fight me. <laughs> also, <laughs> God, I have so many things to say. We got to go. All right, we got to well, go. Here's my here. thing. Jesus Did Christ, you Jennifer, this letter is inappropriate. Did you notice? I can't believe it took me this long. I thought about this two days ago. Why is he in a vest? We didn't even get an invite. To what? Mardi Gras. Oh, I wouldn't invite us anymore. I'd invite us. COVID started because we were there. <laughs> Don't put that on us. I've always co- I've always put COVID on our backs. <laughs> Once this gets into a certain strain of social media, and that clip gets played, we're in big trouble. Well, those are platforms we're we would docks. never. You would never sign up. A, a um, I just will say, if, if I thought about it, that I, let's say I uh, Google Earthed the cabin, yeah, and I saw you and I cocktails in hand oh, walking, fun. It would floor me. Like I would uh, go, exactly. What the fuck? Exactly. And there's not even another side to it. That's just a one. This is a, this is if you saw that, you'd be whoa. And then scariest, that's the woman. Scariest side of it? You would go, I don't remember seeing a Google Earth car. We would have said something. We would have. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's even too. scarier. It's a drone. It will be. So, yeah, you and your future tech. I can't handle it. One day people won't be able to talk anymore. Um, all right. Some would say they already can't. <laughs> <laughs> can't say what you think. Okay. Jennifer Braun. Jennifer! Uh, this was a great, fun little letter. I love this, too. I'm floored. Not even a question. It's I'm just floored. a pen pal going, guess what happened in my life? And I it's, love letters like that. it is like significant. That. If you want to do the same, care of the Pen Pals podcast, can I, can, 54. If anyone can match a Google Earth story like this in any way, yeah, fucking yeah. right. Oh, us. I love a good coincidence. I, I got to know. Get, get us, get it, give us some crazy coincidence letters. Those yeah. are fun. Yeah. Uh, and let's show Jennifer that spooky so stuff good. is real. Oh, it is real. Let's convert her. Well, the only way to do that is we got to scare her good. Jennifer, look up the woman who hit your car when you find out she died 20 years ago. Watch. Is that going to fucking freak you out? Huh? You non believer. <laughs> Watch the conjuring. Care of the Pen Pals Podcast, 5419 Hollywood Boulevard, Suite C, number 121, Los Angeles, California, 900027. You got it. Uh, all right, Jen Braun, we wish you well. Sincerely, your JB. Pen Pals, Daniel Van Kirk and Rory Van Scovel.